the rocks come from? Because we live on our planet, that's most of the rocks originated from our planet. So the rocks is just a hard form of minerals, other elements that exist on our planet. If briefly speaking, we have three main type of rocks, it's easy to remember. And the first type, it's the rocks that come from the Earth itself, deep down grounds of the Earth. So if you uh, imagine our Earth and you know it looks like a big ball, inside of the ball we have a hard core, something like a little sun, but much, much, much smaller. And it's in the very center of our ball of the Earth. And that's where the most heavy elements are. So they, by the um, gravity, by the forces of the weight, they just sink down. So it's very heavy metals there accumulated. When the lighter elements, they more accumulated towards the surface of our Earth. So we have the thin layer of the crust on the surface. We have the large core inside, hot, heavy metals. And we have a lot of lighter elements suspended in between, which is melted. We call it magma, so they're in a melted form there. If you imagine the Earth like a pie, pie with a, a crust on the surface, which is our, our hard surface continents and the ocean base on the surface of the Earth, and a melted material within, which is your stuffing of your pie, which is still melted. And in some places, this melted magma will come out to the surface Similar like when you boil your soup and in the places there's a high temperature, high pressure and you have like a bubble popping out on the surface. So this was happening with the magma and she find the places cracks on the surface of the crust of the earth and coming out. And we call it volcanoes and some volcanoes can be found on the surface of our continents and it would be one type of volcano. Some volcanoes uh, and there are many actually, they're under the oceans and they erupted under the water. And as a result, water surrounding those lava that's coming out in the base of the ocean and the one type of rock formed uh, when the volcano erupted on top of the continents. We see the explosion with a lot of steam and rocks and lava flow, which solidifies straight away what it's floating down on the crust of the earth. So there will be different types of rock formed, depends on the temperatures involved, depends on the surface it's travel over and also depends on the chemical components of the lava at that place. So that moment when this lava solidified, cooling down, we call it the formation of the rocks. And they'll be different, as I say. It's similar like when you have a candle and you have the warm wax, it's already liquefied like a fluid. And if you pour it on the table, it will solidify and become solid. So similar the rocks formed during the eruption of volcanoes on the surface or under the water. So if your volcano is up in the high mountains, cooler temperatures and it's erupted very fast, we have formation of particular rocks. For example, we're all familiar with the scoria. Scoria it's very kind of bubbly type of rocks, so there's a lot of spaces in between the crystals and you can see it's been formed during the very fast eruption, the lava was injected out of the volcano in the air and it's solidified just straight away in the air. That's why there's a lot of holes within this rock and it's much lighter rock. If the rock solidify white steel within the volcano, under the high temperatures, there's a bigger crystals of different components formed. And it's more heavier type of rocks with the big crystals and we call them granites or gabbro or other type of volcanic rocks. The volcanoes that leak in the base of the ocean, they have very hard composition, mostly metals, uh, because they are more deep down in the magma, because the bottom of the ocean is on a deeper surface. And we have type of basalt rocks formed during that. So it's much, much harder rocks. They have less silica composition or even none. And they're very, very solid. They work as a shield. Next type of rock it's sedimentary rock and the name of this rock is have something to do with the way how they formed. So all these rocks which come from the ground, 
from uh, solidified magma, which I talked about, volcanic rocks we call them, they uh, become exposed to the surface of the Earth, obviously, when they solidify. And what's happening in the surface of the Earth, we have constantly movements, people walking, animals, we have vegetation growing, we have a sun coming during the day, warming up the surface, at night cooling down of the surface. So, difference in the temperature, we have rain coming down, we have snow in the winter, uh, freeze at night if you're in the cold area or in the mountains, in the warmer temperature during the day. So there's a constantly happening changes of the environment. As a result, the rocks that formed depends on how hard they are, how uh, resistant they are to these changes. They start a little bit taking apart bits by bits, so separates creating cracks, the water percolate through the cracks, more increased temperature, cool down temperature, cause increasing of the cracks, roots going through, and as a result, these rocks start falling apart. For example, if you take a cardboard box, put it somewhere outside on the street, and you come every day and take photographs, what's happening with this box, you will see that it's get wet, warm up in the sun, maybe some animals come and uh, bite a little bit of it. So with the time, it start deteriorate and fall apart. So similar happening with the rocks and we call it weathering. Weathering because the weather of course changing. And if you have a rocks much more harder like more basaltic or metallic rocks it will take longer time to separate the particles and chip off little bits. If you have more looser rocks uh, for example like scoria it will take faster time to take it apart. Uh, and as a result, you will have different types of sedimentary, like second, secondary rocks formed. There's also the physical exposure of the rocks. So if they're on a the slope, they might deteriorate, the rain come down, move them, they fall down. You can have earthquake, which can cause shaking and the rocks will roll down the slope and they will fall apart on the way as well. We have dramatic events like big landslides, which crushed big rocks, solid rocks, into these fine particles at the same time. We also have animals, uh, human activity, which constantly move rocks, break rocks, and affect them physically or chemically. So there's all these processes that contribute to removing the rocks from the places where they originated, move them further down, and separate the particles, minerals within the rocks apart and creating new type of rocks. Many rocks moved by rivers and streams. So if you look in the little streams, they might seem not doing anything for the rocks. They're just lying there. But if you come in a very heavy rainfall event, the flow of the river start picking up smaller rocks. They create like a mass that move bigger rocks. At the same time, there's like a piece of wood which fall down and drained as well. And actually the small rivers creating, going into the biggest stream, they're creating big floods, waterfalls, and they're creating bigger input into the larger rivers. And as a result, a lot of material will moved by those events. And eventually all these bigger rocks, smaller rocks, on the way they start sorting and crushing, the corners start polishing off. So if you look to the river material, if you're going towards the river, you see the very, very rounded rocks there. Why are they so rounded? Because not just because somebody rounded them, uh, because when they moved within the river, within the smart flow material, they scratch each other and they polish off the sides. At the same time, all this polish off little bits, uh, they become chipped off like pieces of mica or pieces of quartz, pieces of any other materials, and they're moving faster in a river flow because they're lighter and smaller, and they move further down, down the river. And in some places they start accumulating like in the bottom of the lake or the bottom of the sea, or they moved further down towards the ocean. And the ocean accumulates the huge amount of all these little particles, we call it silt and sands, in the very bottom. Because if you know the ocean base, it's huge and it's very deep, down three, four, five kilometers. And it's all filled with these sedimentary materials will come from the continents. As a result, these finer particles, they sorted, the lighter and smaller ones move further down. The heavier rocks, uh, they accumulated somewhere on the way in a little more basins. And we have all this thickness of the material accumulated at the bottom of the lakes, oceans and seas. So what's happening? You have hundreds of meters of material, 200, 300, 500, and eventually it's become quite heavy for these materials. So they start by their own way creating pressure on each other. And with time, with thousands of years, it will cause creation of the rock, 
like the lithified, the minerals kind of grow into each other. They become solid. So from the sand, they become sandstone, solid material. There's some chemistry maybe involved, pressure and temperature in formation of that rock. And eventually, this, when this rock formed, we call them sedimentary rocks. Another type of rock that can be formed in the bottom of the ocean, apart from just materials that come from the continents, it's also from the life forms remnants. So we have a lot of plankton which suspended within the waters of the ocean. And when they die, the bodies, shells, uh, skeletons just falling down through the waters into the basin of the ocean. And in those places, we have thick layer of chalk accumulated. And with time as well, it's become lithified. And the chalk you use at school to write on the blackboard, it's come from the bottom of the ocean or lakes or the seas. So how we find these rocks then on the surface eventually? With time, as I said, you know, you have your pie with a little crust on the surface and a hot magma underneath within. This magma constantly moving, it's mixing because temperature is moving up and down. So the crust pieces on the surface, which we call plates, uh, they start moving one against each other. Places where they have softer material, they subsidize under the thicker materials. We have those plate zones where material somewhere rising up towards the surface, scraping, squashing, and then it's become moved up towards the surface. And then we find these rocks on the surface. And then again, they become exposed to the weathering. They start falling apart by the gravity, by the waters, by the temperature. They're moving down the streams, into the rivers, and back down into the ocean in new sedimentary rocks forming. So this constant cycle, which happening not very fast, it's happening through thousands of thousands of years. But nevertheless, we can see it very clearly on our planet. And the last type of stones I want to talk about is those that fall down from the sky. Now, of course, we have those stones that fall down from the sky. We call them asteroids or meteorites, but they're quite insignificant uh, in production of stones on our planet. Of course, there's a lot of material that's just in the space circling around. And if the enough big rock come close to our atmosphere, to our planet, it will be dragged by our gravity. And as a result, it will fall down on our planet. And if it was big enough, so it wasn't burned down, melted down, why it's come through atmosphere, it will fall down as a rock on the surface. And we find them, and usually it's something consists mostly of the metals, because that's the hardest material which will survive all this travel and falling down on our Earth. But the last rock I want to talk about, it's the rocks that form from the rocks that which already exist on our planet, those igneous or volcanic rocks and those sedimentary rocks. So with time, and they say this crust of the Earth is moving, we have plates pushing one against each other. And these areas have very high temperature and pressure conditions. So if you imagine the huge continent pushing against other huge continent, of course, there'll be enormous amount of temperature and pressure created, especially down towards the magma, towards the deep down of the Earth. And in those areas, if you have some sedimentary rock or chalk, or you have some volcanic rocks, they, by the temperature increasing and the pressure, start changing the composition of the crystals within. And as a result, new type of rocks formed. And these little particles, crystals, they start to realign towards each other and create a new type of rocks. So the most famous rocks you probably know, it's nice uh, when you see the layering of different type of crystals within. Uh, the same chalk we talked about, which accumulated in the bottom of the ocean, when it's pressurized, it's create marble. And you're all familiar with the beautiful shiny white marble with the beautiful crystals. So this is just the chalk you use in the classroom, which being pressurized by the temperature and pressure within the crust and created into the marble. And you can notice in there's a different types of marble, darker, more purple, more gray. Why it's so? Because we have original chalk have different compositions. For example, there was a more sand particles or clay particles. It was more grayish. And as a result, marble become more grayer and so on. So that's why we have such an enormous amount of different type of rocks. Depends where they are, where they were positioned for the formation time. And they're all so beautiful. There's also the one more type of rocks which exists. We call them more crystals or minerals. It's the minerals and crystals that grow within particular layers of the rock in the cracks by the different temperature or chemistry conditions. For example, you start having quartz, beautiful crystals growing somewhere in the cave. So for example, you can also grow the rocks yourself. If you ever buy in the shop growing crystals at home, you can perform some little experiments at home just taking simple salt to dissolve it in the water and you can orb this dissolved water on the sun 
and wait when water evaporates and the crystals will form. You can do the same with the sugar. Or you can put string touching the water and as well the crystals start growing up to the string. So you can do these sorts of experiments and grow your own minerals at home. Mm -hmm.